What's going on everybody? As 2022 is closing upon us, I wanted to go over my top 10 albums of the year. For clarification, I'm not saying that these are the best albums of the year. These are my favorite albums of the year. So what I listened to the most, what I found the most enjoyable, and what I thought were just the best projects. So without further ado, let's get right into it. And to clarify, these are not in any specific order. I will be saying my number one of the year before I announce it. One of my picks of the year is definitely Too Alive by Yeet. I'm including the Deluxe. A lot of these albums I'm gonna be including the Deluxe because they drop the same year. Unless they drop a, a different year, I wouldn't I wouldn't include. But Yeet delivered a great project. Up to me was a lot to top, but Too Alive I think had just a bunch of bangers on it. He had great features. I mean Young Thug, Gunna, KO. KO was probably my favorite feature on the project. I think he just went crazy and it was a perfect length, you know, like about 20, 20, what, 20, oh shit. Oh, well, with the deluxe, it's about like 29 songs, but before, I, I think the last song was still counting, so it was like 20 songs, but yeah, this was, this was a great album. Very impressive that you put this all together and it had just a bunch of hits on it, like Racks On Me, Poppin, that just went, you know, crazy all over TikTok, went viral, so a lot of these songs just got carried through, people just using them via the internet. Which is not surprising because he has been shifting, like shifting into the mainstream. It's crazy. Definitely one spot I have to give to the Yeet with Two Alive. I gotta admit the Geek Pack added even even more heat that oh, what song? Love Money. Love Money has to be one of my most streamed songs of the year. I think I streamed that song like over fifty times, which is just a lot. Up next we got Doughboy's album of twenty twenty two. He actually dropped two projects, but he dropped this one first, titled Oh Really. Now, if you know Doughboy, you know that's his main catchphrase, his main, you know, logo. His whole thing's Oh Really, and I, I personally love it, especially in songs where he's just like, out of nowhere, like, Oh Really! But yeah, Doughboy delivered here. I mean, you got a solid track list, some, some pretty interesting features. I think some of them worked out for him, some of them didn't. Like, I didn't really care for Vori and Ty Dolla Sign. Moneybag Yo, I'll... He always delivers on features. I mean, especially songs, but features, he just he just wants to go nuts every time. A lot of these songs I've had on replay, like respectfully, respectfully, I've had respectfully on replay all year. I mean, I don't think there has been like one week I've been without this song. 3 a.m. in LA, Big O Really, Ain't My Fault was a great, it was a lead single before it really. Uh, with 42 Doug and Rowdy Rebel. I think they were a great trio on this track. They just bounced off each other and they just really put on a good performance. I do it with that funny music video with the grandma. Don't worry, really just put out an entertaining album. Like I just, I really found a lot of enjoyment in this album and especially the song Low Key with Uzi. I'm glad he threw that on there. He had like, you know, before release this, I'd say months ago before this album. And I was bumping that when that dropped. And then he put it on the end, and I think it was a great ending track because a lot of these songs are a little more up tempo, a little more aggressive, and then low key is just more of like a bubbly, slow beat with uh, Uzi, and they both kill it on their part. So, in total, I think this is just a, a wonderful album, and uh, I'm excited what uh, Doughboy's putting out next. I know he's working with Southside to make uh, Demons R Us 2, which Demons R Us 1 was heat, so can only can only imagine what. <clears throat> what that next project is going to sound like. And up next, Pink Hearts by Sofago. Now, if we're talking about albums that we were most excited for for the year, this had to be up in my top three. With his last project, After Me, going just so crazy. With this new voice of rage he was bringing to the stage, I was very excited for this album. And for the weight that he made us endure through, which was like, uh, what, a year? Almost two years? So some something in that range. Uh, he also did drop an EP called For the Pink. And which I honestly think the EP was almost better than this album. I do really like this album. You know, there's a lot of good songs, but some of the songs just didn't hit for me. Like Marvelous, Forever. I will admit there's some good songs on this. You got Hell Yeah with Ken Carson, which was one of the lead singles. I think that song bangs. I actually saw that song live on the Trippin' Night Tour because Trippy brought out Fago as the opener. And uh, sadly, Ken wasn't there, but uh, they did perform that together at the LA show, but nobody knew it <clears throat> in Philadelphia. Nobody knew it, but it was it was cool just to hear it early. One of the snippets for that song were literally just from the concert from that tour. And then you have another Grail, "Stay Awake." "Stay Awake" was a great song. I think Uzi did his thing on it. I listened to the snippet before Uzi was even on the song, and uh, I'm just happy it finally got released. I was scared it was going to be cut. A lot of artists cut their best songs. I don't know why. I, I have no explanation on that. Just it is what it is. It happens. 
But yeah, Don Topper does his part on Slit. Uh, for show sure is definitely one of my favorite tracks on this album. Took off. It was a good song. I don't know why he wanted DJ Khaled on it. I don't know what that intro, what benefited that to the song. I really don't think it helped. But you know, DJ Khaled. I guess it's a. I guess it's a good look. He's a big name. You know, figures upcoming. So I guess he just wanted that. This album was alright. It wasn't everything I expected. I think it's. It has a little bit of filler, and it could have been a little better. Now, if you thought one of the top albums of this year wasn't gonna be Drip Season Forever, you were just completely wrong because Gunna just he's delivered. Now this man is finally free as of yesterday. As of. December 14th, which is just a blessing, a blessing. I'm so happy he's out. Next we need Jeffrey, you know, time will come, he'll get out. I believe it, I believe it. Even got Drake on P-Power, which that song blew the fuck up. You got Mop, great song, Poochie Gown. You know, even another huge track that went across the internet everywhere, pushing P. Future and Thug helped him out on that track. I just loved, like, towards the ending of the album. I just think he has a lot of nice slow beats, and they all really kind of mesh together. Not in the way that it just gets repetitive and you think it's just one song. He even put the two easy remix at the end with Roddy Rich. In my opinion, Roddy was not needed on that song, but he doesn't do that bad. I really like how he put Chloe on You and Me. I think that was a great feature, and I think she killed her part. Shout out, Chloe. And now we have no other than Mr. Ken Carson himself with his X project. This is the deluxe version extended, but I'm just gonna include the deluxe because it dropped the same year, 2022. Opium member Ken Carson dropped this uh, album. It was, I would say long awaited and it had lots of hits on it. I went and saw this album in concert and it was just a great album just to mosh to, to rage to, even to just lose your voice to. Intro starts off amazing. I think this is one of my top three tracks on the album. I just, I think he, Glides on this beat so effortlessly. Come down, you got gems, nobody. It, it just the list goes on. And the only features he has on this project are opium members. Now, this is obviously done on purpose because opium members boost each other. When you have Ken Carson collab with Destroy Lonely, they're only just bouncing off and benefiting each other. And this cycle just repeats. You got Delinquent with Homicide Gang, Michi and Bino. All three are just bumping off each other, just boosting each other's sales, getting each other more fans, you know? It's a great, you know, little little formula I have here. This album includes Freestyle 2, which easily is the biggest song of the album. This went viral. Once again on TikTok, I swear this is just a new way of music just bumping and boosting up sales. Destroy Lonely, his feature on MDMA, I mean, come on. <laughs> They even put on murder music on here, which was like a SoundCloud favorite they dropped. Towards the end though, like Get Richard Die, Turn Up, they were all right. The end was, you know, Green Day, Big Day, Big Day when that dropped. Moving on into the deluxe part of the album, he finally dropped the anticipated snippet, Freestyle 3. He finally previewed this song at a concert in New Jersey and the whole crowd knew all the words, just because it's been so hyped up. Fashion Habits, Shoot, Swagger, Reload, and Lookbook. I'd say all these songs were a lot more chill than what he was going for on the original X, which was great because you want to add, you know, different vibes to a project. You don't want to just have all rage. I'm excited what you got up next. I know you're probably working on that opium tape with Lone, so I'm only, I'm only expecting banger songs on that because that is probably my favorite duo this year. An overhated album that I think deserves a lot more appreciation is I Never Liked You by Future. I found this album very enjoyable. I mean, he kind of went crazy on the in the intro. The first three songs, actually the first five songs. Ah, dude, I want to even say the first six songs. He just went in. Keeping It Burning was definitely a cut from Donda. I can just tell it has that same theme that, you know, Kanye was going for. But I'm glad it made it onto a future album and didn't just get thrown away into the vault forever. 712, he, he just is just going off. I mean, it sounds like he's just on a run and he's just blurting out everything and it all just goes together. I mean, Wait For You was on the radio like the whole year, but that's just Drake and Future. They're used to that. They run the radio. Like Me, Future 42, Doug, and Lil Baby. I think that was a great trio for this song. They slid on the beat. I think 42, Doug, Loki did the best though. Lil Baby obviously followed back though with a great, great verse. Some fella, I will admit, it's not a perfect album, but I really enjoyed it and it was definitely up there for top 10 albums of the year for me. I do hope he throws away this uh, little, this toxic theme. It is getting a little corny like I never liked you. It is funny though that the album cover is the clip with Young Thug of 
saying she belongs to the streets. He called. She belongs to the streets. So I do think that is funny, but I think for his next album, he should throw away this whole like toxic love type theme and just go for something new because Future just has endless, endless ideas when it comes to albums and I think he can do a lot better when it comes to the message of, of the project. One of my personal favorites of the year, good movie by Pierre Bourne. Mr. Bourne just, he just went in. I mean, I'm not going to lie, the first couple times I listened to this project, it was not hitting. It was definitely one of those albums you have to listen to at least three or four times, which some people don't have the attention span for that especially with this project ending at 23 songs. I think Pierre went for a whole new different vibe for this project. You know, he's very known for his life of Pierre. This was a very slow but enjoyable album. You know, you got the skits, you got opening scenes. This is like a subtle introduction to the song. It's a very late night vibe album, in my opinion. It's a great track list. Love Drill, Crazy Song, Hop My Bed, Where Are You Going? Where Are You Going has to be top three on the album for me. I think just the hook is just so addicting. Got a great feature from Don Tolliver. I think this is one of his best features of the year. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but Don Tolliver has been on a feature run this fucking year, 2022. Although he didn't drop an album, he dropped enough features that can make an album. Good movie, the self-titled track, the lead single. Great song. I just think this was a very fun album, and it's not going to be everyone's favorite Pierre Bourne album. It's not even my favorite Pierre Bourne album, but I just found it so enjoyable. Metro Boomin finally made a boom. With being pushed back from her Lost album, he finally dropped Heroes and Villains, which was worth the wait. I mean, you got banger after banger. He even has John Legend on this album. He has Morgan Freeman, and then every big feature you can imagine. And it just really shows you how well they can just all come together, you know, on one project and really show off their talents. We're talking about favorites from this album. Too Many Nights definitely has to be up there for me. The song with Rocky and Takeoff, Rest in Peace, The Rocket. You couldn't have dropped that at a better time. We're in a drought for Takeoff right now for his music. Everyone wants to hear him with an amazing verse. Throughout this project, you also have Young Thug, Metro Spider. Even his song with Travis Scott. I can't explain the joy that comes to my body when I hear Thug on a track. Especially spitting like he did on Metro Spider. At first he was a bit of slow with the tempo and then he picks it up. And if you can handle it then you're going to love the song because it's just so fun. 21 Savage did his thing but when does Metro and 21 not do their thing together? They have two banger collab projects in the past that everyone knows about. Savage Mode 1 and 2. I think everyone played their part on this album. I did find it very funny that Metro put Morgan Freeman on this album. I thought he was a great interlude. Just his voice. And I think it adds a great tone to the album because, you know, it's a whole heroes and villains thing coming together. Now, I know I said none of these albums are in order, but Only Built for Infinity Links by Quavo and Takeoff. Once again, rest in peace, Takeoff. This has to be my top three. I mean, I've listened to this album so many times this year and every, every listen is just so much fun. You had the lead single for the project, Hotel Lobby, aka Unconfused. Just go bonkers. I mean, over a mustard beat, they were just having fun, but... You can tell just the energy is there in the song, and you, you can understand why everyone ate up the song and everyone loved it. It's just, it has such a great tone to it. It's very sad what just happened, but I'm very glad they got to drop this project before the event happened. There's a lot of fun songs on this. I mean, Chocolate has to be a top five song of the year for me. I just think the four artists just worked together so well and just made such a great song. None of them had a bad verse. Messi was interesting, you know. Quavo kind of shouted out Saweetie for going for offset when she could have just had the whole team around them but that, that's not my business big stun is a very fun song us first them i'm glad they put birdman on this project birdman is definitely underrated even nba youngboy does a great job on this project look at this another banger i can't even describe how fun this project is they just brought back what the migas have been missing for the past couple of years in my opinion I think Quavo and Takeoff work a lot better together than they did with the Migos. Just like I said that, Offset works a lot better on his own. I think he's been dropping nothing but heat. If he dropped the project this year, it might have been in my top 10. Although he didn't, I think it was due to the circumstance of Takeoff's death heavily affecting him, which I totally understand. But I will be ready for 2023 when he drops because his lead singles, Code, and 54321 have all just been heat and I'm just so excited to see what he puts out next. My number one favorite project of 2022 has to go to No Stylist by Destroy Lonely. This was a long awaited project. It took about two years to drop and it was well worth the wait. And I'm so happy to be saying that because a lot of artists drop projects after a long wait and it just 
doesn't build up to the hype that it had. This project offered just a ton of different vibes when it comes to these tracks. Jet lag, what a way to start an album, get everyone hyped up. Bergdorf, Love My Gang, Vitamins Co. We have the self-titled track that went viral. I think everybody knows the song I'm talking about. No stylist. That took over. It still is taking over. That song is still going up every day on Spotify and Apple Music. This deluxe, it was a cherry on top of a, of a perfect 10 out of 10 Sunday because he had a blitz, allure, have my way, never ever. Such such great tracks. I also was very fond of the samples he used on this project. He used a lot of samples from Deftones, and I just think it works so well with Lone's voice. Lone is so versatile to the sense where he can use a lot of different samples, and I'm very excited to see what he's gonna use next, because I can only imagine. These guitar beats that he was using are just so, so his style, and it worked out so well for him, and I'm really glad you know that he stuck to who he was and didn't try to make any mainstream album because this was basically basically the biggest album he was going to drop in this in this time you know he just got signed to opium he just came off his last album broken hearts which was a fantastic album again i gotta say my favorite song on this project is definitely make it stop i just love how he comes in, in the beginning and then he just speeds up and it's just so it's just so addicting but yeah this is easily my favorite project of the year uh he named the deluxe so the original project was named no stylist and the deluxe was named after his cat ultra which i found very very funny and very cool that he just included his pet in there but yeah i'm gonna close it off here i appreciate you guys checking out this video and i want y'all to have a great day peace <laughs>